I'm Sarah. Welcome, if you're new or welcome back to Thrills and Kills Book 2 where we talk about everything horror, thriller, and true crime related. So we're coming up quickly on the holidays. I hope you all are having a magical holiday season. So I wanted to put together a little vlog where I read some festive horror books. So we all know that October is obviously like the pinnacle of the horror genre, but there's actually some really great horror movies and books out there around the winter holidays. So there are three books that I'm going to be focusing on for this vlog. Two of them are also for the Christmas Evil Readathon. All right, let's get into it. So the first book that I am reading, uh, I've actually already started this and I'm enjoying it, is called The Christmas Killer. So this is the first book in a three book series and this takes place over in England. I was recommended this book by Michelle at Michelle's Melancholia and I have decided that I'm gonna fit this in for one of the prompts for the Christmas Evil Readathon. I started reading it uh, on the Kindle and then I had to drive somewhere and I started listening and I definitely prefer the audiobook versions. I'm just gonna stick with that. The narrator is really, really good. And I think maybe it's the style of writing. It just, it wasn't lending itself so much to the written word. I found it more enjoyable listening. So let's tell you a little bit about this book. 12 Days, 12 Murders. So it is a twist on the 12 days of Christmas. You know, the first day of Christmas. So that is really cool. I've not read anything that did that before. Here's a little description. As the snow begins to fall, the body count begins to climb. Detective James Walker is ready for a quiet family Christmas in the sleepy village of Kirkby Abbey. But when he opens an early Christmas present left on his doorstep, he soon realizes it is no gift. Inside is a gruesome surprise and a promise. 12 days, 12 murders. Can James stop the killer before they strike again? I am enjoying it. I am maybe a quarter of the way through so far. Like I said, the narrator is really good, especially when there's scenes that are like tense or emotions are running high. You can hear him like <sighs> breathing hard, like, like the character would be, right? So I'm just really enjoying that. No, this is more of a like cozy mystery. It's not necessarily scary. It's like a cozy murder mystery, kind of like a murder she wrote type of a thing. I'm an American. <laughs> I had to Google because they kept saying Cumbria, Cumbria. And I'm like, what does that even mean? So I'll admit, I didn't know where that was until I Googled it. Now I know where it's at. So to my other American friends, it's the northern part of England, up near Scotland. There's a lot of mountains. So it makes sense that in December leading up to Christmas, there'd be a lot of snow and a blizzard might come in. The detective and his wife, they lived in England and he was part of, I think it's called the Metropolitan Police. He keeps referring to the Met. Something happened and they were like, let's go back to her hometown that's isolated, like, you know, slow down and very small village where everyone knows each other, knows their business. Let's go move there away from the hustle and bustle of the city. And they think that they're gonna have a very relaxing life and then this happens and he's like oh crap <laughs> so i'm enjoying it so far um it's not like the most sophisticated murder mystery like, it's pretty easy i think to figure out but i think it's more meant to just be like cozy and entertaining wrap up by the fire with a hot cocoa and a blanket and just go with it the second book i haven't started this yet i know it is coming in my nightroom subscription well, i get daily emails with sales for kindle books and so this was on sale for i think like 4.99 and i thought oh let me get that that sounds good and it'll also fit one of the prompts for the read along so this second book is called lucky girl how i became a horror writer a krampus story so i already told you i love krampus so when i saw this i thought yep i gotta get that <laughs> so this is a quick little novella i think it's maybe uh, not even 200 pages. Ro, a struggling writer, knows all too well the pain and solitude that holiday festivities can awaken. When she meets four people at the local diner, all of them strangers and as lonely as Ro is, she invites them to an impromptu Christmas dinner. So what could go wrong, you know? Loners and strangers involving them into your house. Yeah, obviously that's gonna go well, right? And when the party seems in danger of an early end, she suggests that they each tell a ghost story, one that's seasonally appropriate. But Ro will come to learn that the horrors hidden in a Christmas tale or one's past can never be tamed once unleashed. So I think that sounds great, spooky, perfect for the 
uh, holiday Christmas season. I'm hoping to get to that in the next few days and I could probably finish it in a day or two. So I'll check in with you and tell you what I think. It looks like it's 3.4 stars on Goodreads, but it tends to be skewed mostly in the three star range. So, hey, if it's a three star, whatever. It's just meant to be a quick, enjoyable read ahead of the Christmas season. All right, and the third book I'm gonna read, now this is just on its own. This is not part of any of the uh, Christmas Evil readathons, although I probably could fit it in somewhere. And this is called Secret Santa. So this is a Christmas horror story that takes place in an office. Um, it is coming in the mail, so I'll have to just put a picture here. I'm waiting for that to get delivered. This is 3.5 stars on Goodreads. So it says, The Office meets Stephen King. Dressed up in holiday tinsel in this fun, festive, and frightening horror comedy set during the horror publishing boom of the 80s by New York Times bestselling satirist Andrew Schaffer. Out of work for months, Lucy Meyer is desperate to work anywhere in publishing. Prestigious Blackwood Patterson isn't the perfect fit, but a bizarre set of circumstances leads to her hire and a firm mandate. Lucy must find the next horror superstar to compete with Stephen King, Anne Rice, and Peter Straub. That is quite... That is quite the to-do. Wow, that's a big task. <laughs> it's the 80s after all, and horror is the hottest genre. That makes me think of, did, have you guys ever seen on SNL where it's Stefan? He's like, the hottest new club in New York City is. That's what it makes me think of. But as soon as she arrives, Lucy finds herself the target of her coworkers' mean-spirited pranks. Hazing reaches a peak during the company's annual Secret Santa gift exchange, and Lucy receives a demonic-looking object that she recognizes but doesn't understand. I'll check in with you as I start reading more and tell you my thoughts, and then throughout the month, kind of like what I'm up to so far. I've started decorating my house. This is my little corner in my home office. This is really all the space I have. And that's probably gonna be it. Maybe put like a wreath out on our front door. Obviously we're gonna watch, like I said, Krumpus and Gremlins this month. That's what I've got for you so far. I'll check in with you as I read more and keep you updated on what I'm doing for the holiday season. Hey, so this is check-in number one for the Christmas killer. So I am about 25% of the way through the first killing just happened. It's definitely like a cozy mystery, like I said in the intro kind of fallen flat so far like it's enjoyable enough because I think it's really cool to read about um, this Cumbria this northern area in England and there's a snowstorm coming in and it's almost Christmas season and people are shopping for their Christmas cards like it's a cutesy little story as far as like the setting and learning about the people who live there we're starting to get like the bits of gossip like who's having an affair with who and they're down at the local pub talking about people. Author's definitely trying to set up like possible motives for who might be the killer. There's someone who I think it is, and if that's who it ends up being, I'm gonna be disappointed because it's pretty freaking clear if that's who they end up going with. So I've been listening to The Christmas Killer while I was working today. Now I'm done working and I kind of want to switch gears because that's a cozy mystery. It's not a horror and I want to get back into the horror spirit. So I'm going to start Lucky Girl by M. Ricker. Um, I just watched Jordaline Reads her wrap up for November and she read this and really just liked it for a multitude of reasons. So I'm hoping I like it. Um, if not, it's short enough, it's short and sweet and it was only like $4. So no harm, no foul. Okay, I am here to check in for my holiday horror vlog, and this is not a good one. I keep doing these vlogs and I keep reading duds, so I don't really know what to do about that, but let's talk about it. I read and finished the book Lucky Girl, How I Became a Horror Writer, A Krumpus Story, which it's like three different freaking titles, which should have been the first clue that this was gonna just be disjointed and not make sense, but here we are, so it's a novella. The only way I can get through this is if I spoil it, so I'm sorry. Fast forward if you don't want it to be spoiled. So this is a book that's supposedly about Krumpus, right? And so I read this on Krumpus Nacht, December 5th. My plan was, oh, I'm gonna read this during the day. It's nice and quick. I can read it like in the morning before work and then on my lunch break, it's that quick. And then at night I'll watch Krumpus. So I did watch Krumpus. That was like the saving grace of the day, thankfully. One of my favorite Christmas movies. Um, but this book was just 
freaking terrible. So we are following Ro, who wants to be a horror writer, and the book starts off with a bunch of people who just happen to meet in a cafe in like a college town and they don't have Christmas plans, so they all get together. Great. And then they decide to tell ghost stories. So I thought, okay, cool. This is gonna be reminiscent of like Peter Straub's ghost story or Christmas Carol or, you know, Victorian type ghost stories where they sit around the fire on Christmas and read each other ghost stories. No, that is the furthest thing from what this book was. So they go around and tell these like piddly little stories, which aren't even ghost stories, don't make any fucking sense, aren't creepy. Then all of a sudden they're gone. And then all of a sudden we fast forward and it's the next Christmas and they all, well, not all of them. So one person is missing and they get together and it's like weird. And then we fast forward again. And then the author is telling us about their life stories. And suddenly it's like 20 years later and they're getting together again for Christmas. But yet now she's a famous horror writer. One of the people so there were two of the people in the group got married the wife died so now the widower is like his first Christmas without her and anyways they go to this rich kid's house and then all of a sudden we're also flashing back to Rose childhood and her family was killed in a fire and she had this like weird mysterious pen pal that she never actually met and this whole time you're like what the fuck is going on? Is this a ghost story? No, because no ghost stories happened, even though like the pitch of the book is how they sit around and tell ghost stories. Uh, is it uh, like home invasion? Who the fuck knows? Um, is it a kidnapping story? Who the fuck knows? Because we don't really get the full backstory of that situation. Fast forward again, now they're in this mansion of her rich friend's house and his dad died and he took over the business and then he's telling some weird story about Krumpus, but there is no Krumpus anywhere to be seen. And then all of a sudden, the guy whose wife died is coming on to our narrator, the horror author, and then out of the blue, they're suddenly having sex, which, because I highlighted this, because I was like, this is fucking weird. She wakes up in the middle of the night and he's in her room and she's like, oh, you scared me. Then all of a sudden, she pats the bed, he sits down on the bed and, the last timber of his chuckle was still in the air when his cold legs brushed mine and his hot hand was on my breast, his lips against my neck, breathing into me. And when I thought of Adrian again. So it's like, what the fuck? Your wife just died. Then narrator chick, you woke up, he's in your room. Isn't that fucking weird? It's like you guys barely know each other. You've met twice in your life. You wake up to this dude in your room and now you're having sex. This is just like, it's so unbelievable. Then all of a sudden, they're on snowshoes trying to escape because they get a weird feeling, but like it doesn't really give any explanation for why all of a sudden they have a weird feeling. They just, their friend apparently slept in late and now they think that she's dead. So then they find themselves at this weird church and then suddenly they've broken into the church and now they're in the basement and then the chick is not sleeping in late. She's in a cage and they call the police and the police come and get her out. But it's like, none of it makes any fucking sense. It's like so many different stories. Then we fast forward again and now her and this dude are getting married and now they have a baby. Now there's a twist that like he was actually the one who sent her the weird letters as a child and he actually knew her dad because the dad was a teacher and he was a student at the school and he didn't like the way that she was being treated by her parents. So then he did a home invasion and murdered her whole family. And then at the very end, there's like, oh, and there's this magical bell. And apparently if you ring the bell, the Krumpus will come. And the very last line in the book, someone rings the bell and it's like all of a sudden loud noises and the Krumpus are coming in. So it's not a ghost story. It's not a Krumpus story because there is no Krumpus anywhere to be seen other than the last fucking line of the book. Okay, I guess she becomes a horror writer. It was fucking terrible. It was fucking terrible. So. What else did I put in my notes? What was this? A letdown, basically. <laughs> All over the place. Yep, it was disjointed. It felt like a bunch of different stories thrown together. Also, if this was a full length novel and there had been more work done to tie it all together, this could have actually been a really cool story. That's not what this was as well. This was just a fucking lead day. Yeah, no Krumpus. I don't know why it's called a Krumpus story. I was really upset that I read this on Krumpus Talked because there was no Krumpus. The pacing was all over the place. What she chooses to pay attention to detail was so fucking weird. Like in the beginning of the book, she'll spend three or four pages talking about the furniture in this college kid's apartment and how it's hand-me-down like uh, furniture that's like seen better days. And then at the very end of the book, when it's the freaking climax and the twist and she finds out that her husband actually murdered her whole family, it's like one paragraph and it's done. 
like something is wrong there. And then the last thing was in the end, I'm reading the little like author notes and she's like, oh, I'm so thankful to my editor, Ellen Datlow. Ellen Datlow is like the editor of horror. So I don't understand how she let this trash get through. I'm very disappointed in you, Ellen. So because that was so bad and I want to actually read a Krumpus story as part of this, we're adding in another book. And this is a book of short stories and it's called Gothic Blue Book Six, A Krumpus Carol. And there are 30 different um, short stories in this. Some pertaining to Krumpus, some just pertaining to um, like folklore and surrounding Christmas, but I hope that this is better. So I will pick little stories throughout here and read this um, throughout the course of this reading vlog and we'll see how that one goes. The other book, um, I've mostly been listening to it, but I did start also the Kindle last night when I was in bed and this is The Christmas Killer by Alex Pine. I am about, oh, I don't know, 40% of the way through. It's all right. It's not the worst thing I ever read. I'll say I'm glad I'm reading it around the Christmas holiday because the rest of the year, first of all, it wouldn't make sense and I would have DNF'd it by now. So I think the audiobook is still better than the Kindle. The guy's writing is not that great. It just, it comes off better if it's being performed by somebody. The narrator is pretty good. I don't really know. It's not the best. It's enjoyable enough. I think it just needed something mm. and maybe it's coming, but it needs an extra oomph you know, to get it to the next level. And I think if the author had either leaned into being like a full-blown thriller, like a Ruth Ware or something, or full-blown like horror, like this is a true serial killer, it would have been better. It's just kind of like a watered down detective procedural book. And the detective's not that great. He's ruining his own investigation because he's leaking details to his wife, to the priest, to like everybody in fucking town. And it's like, you are like, you should be fired, first of all. I mean, I'm not a policeman, I'm a nurse, but come on, like you cannot be leaking confidential details of this really serious case. And then he'll say like, I can't mess up this case. This will make or break my career, da, 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 da. Like we moved here for a fresh start. I can't fuck this up basically, but yet you're fucking it up. So that's the first update. It's winter time, it's finally cool down here in the South. So I like to do some good cooking. So I think the next couple days, I'm either gonna do like a pot roast or short ribs, something. I don't know, I really am craving like some comfort food, maybe chicken and dumpling, something that you gotta cook for a while so that can help warm up the house because I don't like doing that in the summer. So yeah, that's where we're at. I will check back in with you in a little bit. Okay, so I'm now at the 50% mark on The Christmas Killer, or maybe like 55. So I went back and looked up how many pages this book is because it, like, I feel like I've read so much material, but nothing's happened, but I'm only at 50%. So I was like, how long is this dang book? It's 404 pages, but it, there's like nothing to really have happened to explain for 200 pages that I've read so far. So I don't really know how, how that happens. But anyways, uh, other than that, I don't really have any updates because nothing new is really happening. It's just like slow going and I don't know. I'm gonna stick with it because I don't like DNFing books. And I do think the premise is interesting. I just don't really, I just don't really understand. So I'm headed out to Aldi to do some grocery shopping and it's Wednesday and they drop all their new good stuff on Wednesday. So if anyone's ever been to Aldi, you know there's like the Isle of Shame. And I think they're gonna have like some cute little like holiday stuff. And then they're gonna have a bunch of like German holiday food, like Libkuchen cookies. So I'm gonna go get some good stuff. I'll take you with me. And I'm gonna listen to the book on my drive. Okay, so I was listening a little bit more while I was driving. First stop is the butcher getting some chicken wings and some short ribs. But anyways, so James is a detective. His wife's name is Annie. One of the murders in the village is an acquaintance, a friend of Annie's, right? And so he, well, the forensic group is doing a sweep of the house after the second person is found murdered. And they find a box with like a bunch of stacks of folders and paperwork in each folder. And it's evidence. So he takes it home with him because he's overseeing the case. 
he's reading it late into the night and he finds out some secrets about this person which might lead to why they were targeted and murdered well his next morning he wakes up and he just spills the beans to his wife and he's telling her everything that he found in this box which is keep in mind evidence and like all this person's secrets and like why there might have been a motive to kill her and who might be the suspects i'm like you fucking moron you you don't know like even your own wife you don't know if she's involved you cannot be spilling the beans on the evidence so this is like the worst written procedural detective novel i've ever read all right another check-in so like i said i finished the christmas killer um i started yesterday this book of short stories it's the gothic blue book series and this is the crumpus carol so these are all short stories that uh, take place around christmas and the solstice but they all have some sort of tie back to like folklore so uh, a lot of the stories are about Krumpus not all of them I will say the ones that are about Krumpus or have Krumpus in them those are the ones that I am liking the most they tend to be the darker stories um now if you know anything about Krumpus obviously like he's there to punish kids or at least the threat of him to punish kids um and he supposedly drags them to hell so some of these book stories including him are quite dark and if you are sensitive to thing, bad things happening to children in horror books, then maybe skip this. Nothing is gory. There certainly are stories that are disturbing and like the demise of children. But again, nothing is gory, but just putting that out there. Um, so yeah, so it's Friday evening. Um, my husband and I both got done working a little bit early. He has something to celebrate related to work. So I'm making a really nice dinner. Um, I'm doing um, braised short ribs and some really good like um, mashed sweet potatoes and we're opening a nice bottle of wine. And then this weekend there's a holiday market in my town that I'm gonna go to. So we'll check in later. Bye guys. My friends, I feel like every time I do a reading vlog, they're shit and I don't like the books. And so this one kind of started out where I didn't really like either book, but all is not lost. So I'm sitting here, you can see my little Christmas decor. I have some spiced eggnog. I have holiday cheer. I have an early Christmas present I just bought myself, Woodford Reserve candle. So I'll get that lighting, it nice and festive in here. but. We are gonna talk about Secret Santa, which um, I cannot believe that I have not read this before. How come no one told me? Like, this is so freaking enjoyable. I have really obnoxious dogs. Ignore them. So I guess I, I kind of feel like holiday horror can be kind of gimmicky, which sometimes that's great, like gremlins, right? Like we all know it's kind of cheesy, but we all love it. And I have just, like I said, read some really bad holiday horror, holiday thrillers. And so when you look at this, you kind of feel like it's going to be cheesy, especially when it's like horror, uh, humor horror rather. Like, I don't know, like I've read some Grady Hendrix. I didn't like it. So I was kind of gun shy about picking this up. But in the last few weeks, it's like on everyone's holiday horror TBR. And I thought, okay, sounds interesting enough. Like if I don't like it, it was like 10 bucks, whatever. Um, loved it. Now, I'm not going to say favorite book of the year because it's so niche. It's, you know, Christmas book, but this is at least a four star. So definitely like top five, top 10 for sure of the year. If you're not aware, we're following Lucy. They spell her name so weird. And Lucy is trying to like um, find her new job. She was working as an editor at a publication who was doing mostly horror. And she had had some authors with some hit books, but the company had a huge layoff and she was laid off. So she's trying to get hired at this really prestigious publishing house called Blackwood, but they don't do horror. They do like genre fiction, literary fiction, Pulitzer Prize winning books. Boring shit. 
good shit. Okay, so she finds a way to get the job, or I guess we'll say this, in some morally gray territory, she gets the job, right? Um, and so she is given a task where she basically has to prove herself by the new year. So it's mid-December. She has to prove herself by the new year or she's going to be fired. And so there is a secret Santa party. And now she had just gotten hired. So obviously no one knew to get her a gift, right? Um, but she finds out that she has a gift under the tree. And people are trying to guess who got each of them their gifts. And so she doesn't know anybody. It's like day one. And she thinks it's kind of weird when she opens it up and sees what is in there it's this really creepy looking weird fucking german doll thing so then shit starts going really south and really weird and really dark very quickly i really like that it's like you don't realize it at first but it's kind of some folklore horror um you think it's more like paranormal to begin with there is some paranormal maybe a little bit of like a a, a culty taste like I wouldn't say it's a cult book but like there's a there's a sprinkle of some culty stuff going on people are dying people are getting maimed left and right and in one way you could look at it when she arrived and when shit started going wrong you could make a case for it's her she's the common denominator she must be evil and so some of her co-workers make that that leap as well but they would be wrong it's not Lucy doing it it's whatever this weird fucking thing in this box is, which is called a, a Parkson? Par I, I don't speak German. I don't know how to fucking say it. But this little dude. And that's where the folklore horror comes in. Um, he's in the vein of Krumpus. It's like a cousin of Krumpus, right? It's like Alpine, like Bavarian, um, Germany folklore um, type of situation. Sorry, my dog. We're back. There was a, a wrestling situation that was just... It was getting too hardcore, parkour. All right, guys? Anyway, anyways, anyways, where am I going with this fucking book? Um, it's good. I recommend it for everybody. Now, is there like a twist? I wouldn't necessarily, there's like a huge twist. You can kind of tell what's going on in some regard, um, but I would say pick it up. It's quite good. I am surprised that it's this guy's first horror book because there are so, oh, I didn't even mention it. It's set in the 80s, that's important. 80s in Manhattan. There are so many references to horror in here, like Anne Reich, Stephen King, Shirley Jackson, The Exorcist, all kinds of stuff. And so clearly the author is a horror fan, but when you read the other books he's written, it's almost like political satire. He's never actually written a horror book before. No, he's done some nonfiction, some in like some political satire, no horror. Which if this is your first horror book out of the gate, like very impressive, sir, Mr. Schaffer, Schaefer, very impressive, okay? All right, now I cannot remember if I have given an update since I finished The Christmas Killer. So here we go. So The Christmas Killer, in the end, I guess we'll give it three stars because was it entertaining? Was it enjoyable enough? Yes, as if you were going to put on a holiday Hallmark movie while you're like cleaning the house or cooking. Or it's, stop it, fucking dogs. It's entertaining in that regard. Was it a great, thriller or mystery no it's like a cozy mystery no huge twist you can pretty much see it coming it's a whodunit you can tell who it was so as long as you go into it with those expectations like i think it's enjoyable enough especially if you're looking for a very like holiday thematic type book however well, i didn't know that when i was going into it my expectations were wow it says 12 days 12 killers a take like a twist on the whole like 12 days of christmas and it starts off strong with a dead partridge showing up at the detective's door so i was like this serial killer is going to be so twisted i love it he's going to do this whole like nefarious twist on christmas and every day someone's going to be dead and it's going to be like you know like a really evil twist on whatever the I don't even remember how the song goes. For First day of Christmas of the night. That, you know, that wasn't what it was. Um, 12 people did not die. And I, I'm not saying I wanted people. I mean, it's a fictional story. I was just expecting it to be like, boom, 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 boom. One after the other, people dying. Mm -mm. That's not what happened. There was a lot of like downtime in between. There's only a handful of deaths, a shit ton of downtime. And I understand it because it's a whodunit and we're following this detective and he, you know, we're following him as he's questioning people and looking for clues. These police ain't shit, okay? The police were terrible. And you could see a mile away, like who the killer was. And the, I don't know how they never questioned this person. They just like assume this person could not possibly be involved. I need another swig. What I did like, sorry, that's good. 
I like the little like small town vibe. It's up in Northern England. There's a lot of snow coming in. It's hot. Like I feel like it did a really good job as far as setting the scenery. I like that. It's a town full of messy people. Just so messy. Like people are having affairs left and right, gossiping. Oh, you're my best friend. I would never share that. And then, you know, sharing this person's deepest, darkest secret to the old people in town. And of course the old people are gonna be blabbing their mouths. So I really, that was just hilarious that like everyone in town was messy. So it did complicate things a bit, right? The police then are like, well, this person could have a motive or that person, which no, it was just them living these messy lives. Living in a small town where everyone kind of knows each other's business, I get that. That was fun. There was one, I'm probably nitpicking, but there was one thing that I thought was so freaking weird. Um, my friends in the UK, tell me, do you, when you're talking about measurements, snowfall, how much snow to expect? Do you measure it in inches or are you measuring it in the metric system? I would have thought the metric system. But for the whole book, they're talking about this snowstorm is coming. This snowstorm is coming. Worst snowstorm we've ever seen. And they talk about it in inches. They say like there's nine inches of snow out there. And I don't know why that just stuck in my brain. I'm like, why would it be inches? Like, isn't America the only place that does? I don't know. Maybe you guys do that. But I just thought that was funny. So, and then finally at the end, like the author reveals, even though you could tell the whole time, but the author reveals who the killer is. But the detective like still doesn't get it. And the detective is worried, this person that we know is the killer, the detective is worried about them and thinks that this person is a victim. And so the detective is like running to this person's house to find them and is like, oh my God, you're okay, I found you. And then we're like, you idiot, that's the killer. So I don't know, it wasn't that great. So we've watched Krampus, we've watched Misery. Um, I need to watch The Gremlins and some other, maybe like National Lampoon. I like to watch that every December. Drink some spiked eggnog. I did a lot of cooking and baking this weekend. I made short ribs on Friday, um, like slow braised short ribs. Yep, last night I made coco vam, which is like a slow braised chicken. It just gets so hot down south. Like I wait till winter to do stuff like that because you'd have the oven on for like four hours. I baked some cinnamon rolls that were delicious from scratch, which is also a pain in the ass because it's a yeast dough and it has to proof multiple times. What else? I went to a holiday market. I think it's weird filming in public, but I put a, I made one little video and I took some pictures, so I'll put them up here. Like I said, finish Secret Santa. Now I'm gonna start a non-Christmassy book. I have Little Eve I got from the library, so I need to go start that. Um, so that's my plan spiked eggnog and little Eve. So that's what I got. Welcome to my final holiday horror check-in. So I have now finished The Christmas Killer, Lucky Girl, um, the book of short stories, The Crumpus Carol, and Secret Santa. So let's go over the short stories because I don't think I've given you an update on that. So this is part of a series called the Gothic Blue Book series and they do various short stories. This was called uh, Crumpus Carol. So it's a collection of short stories, folklore, Christmas time horror, that kind of a thing. You know, with any short story collection, there's gonna be some that you like more than others. Overall, it was a really decent collection. I had only ever heard of one author that was in there, which is Laurel Hightower. I hadn't heard of any of the others, but now I definitely wanna go check out more works by them. Um, some of my favorites, so any of the stories that included Crumpus, which there was numerous um, that referred to or that he was the main character, any of those I enjoyed. And then as far as the non-Crumpus stories, so I wrote down the names. There was one called Candy Cane, which this was like two and a half pages. And I think it really says a lot about the author that they are able to 
write a short story in such a short, short amount of, of space, right? Two and a half pages. And at the end of like the last sentence, I was left with this feeling of just extreme unease and like, I wanna read a whole book about that. So I think that says a lot about that author and their skill set. Um, Night of the Epiphany was another one I liked, and that had to do with some like folk horror coming out of Germany and Switzerland around Frau Perchta. I'm not quite sure if I said that correctly, um, but she's sort of a witch that comes around um, around Epiphany around this time of year, and it's another way to threaten children <laughs> with good behavior. And if people didn't behave or do what she wanted them to do, she would <laughs> murder them. Um, I'll let you Google her because it's some very unique way of going about uh, harming people. <laughs> I don't know if I can even say it on the internet, uh, but a very dark, dark, like think about like a grim uh, fairy tale. Like she's a character straight out of that. And what's interesting is in Secret Santa, the little doll, it's called uh, a per Perchta doll. So it has to, I guess it has to do with Frau Perchta and maybe they were helping do her bidding. I don't know a whole lot. I need to research some more on this topic. But essentially these are Germanic, Swiss, like Alpine um, folk stories that have been turned into horror stories. So I really liked that one. And then there was one called Black Lace Binding, which had nothing to do with Krumpus, but it was by Laurel Hightower. A very good short story about a magical book. Um, and I'll just leave it at that because it's so short. If I tell you anything else, it's gonna ruin it. So I really enjoy the Crumpus Carol short story series. I don't really know how to rate that. I'm not going to just cause I don't know, like all the stories are so different. So overall, Christmas Killer was meh. Um, lucky Girl hated it. <laughs> really enjoyed the short story collection and I loved Secret Santa. So overall, I guess this was successful. Um, I went to a holiday market. I joined in on some reading sprints with Kelsey and Michelle through the Christmas Evil Readathon. Um, I did a lot of cooking and baking. I made some cinnamon rolls. I made short ribs. I made cocoa vaughn. What else have I done? Oh, I watched some good movies. So I watched uh, The Muppets Christmas Carol. I mentioned that already. Misery. That's such a great Christmas movie or winter movie. <laughs> um, I watched Bridget Jones's Diary, which you cannot convince me that, that that is not a Christmas movie. That is absolutely a Christmas movie. Krumpus, of course I watched that. So that's what I've seen so far. I got a very long list of movies I wanna get to for the rest of the month. And as far as uh, reading plans for the rest of the month, I have to get to Little Eve. I got that from the library. And then my last two prompts for the Christmas Evil Readathon, I've got the book of the most precious substance and white is for witching. Then I'll have read, I think, five books for the Christmas Evil Readathon. Much better than I was expecting. So that's everything I have for you. This was my holiday horror reading vlog. I'm so excited that I picked up Secret Santa and gave it a chance. If nothing else, that's what made this whole vlog worth it. So uh, I hope you all are having a great holiday season. Let me know what plans you have coming up. Uh, this weekend we are going to a Chinese lantern festival with some beautiful lights. I'll probably do some more cooking, some more baking. So please, I'd love to hear what you all are doing. Hope you're having a happy and safe holiday season and I'll see you in the next one. Bye guys.